Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host Nathan B. Butler. This is a special intermission episode because it's really on something that's related to viewing the films that ties into a home video format that I particularly enjoy, but which isn't home video itself per se. But it's one of those things where I just sort of fell down a rabbit hole of collecting again and I thought I would share. So uh, some of you may know that uh, if you watch this show uh, regularly at least, that I am a big fan of of Star Wars movies in 3D, uh, but I prefer to watch at home. So, you know, now they've stopped producing 3D Blu-rays for Star Wars films and Marvel stuff included, etc., etc. For the U.S. market, I typically have to import them from somewhere. Uh, in this case, this is Rise of Skywalker 3D, regular version, not the Zavi exclusive that was imported, of course, from the U.K., but viewing stuff in 3D is kind of the fun thing for me. I could do away with 4K if I could get everything in 3D. And I know that that's an unpopular opinion in many parts because 3D really didn't catch on, particularly in the U.S. Um, in my case, I'm able to watch the 3D Blu-rays through an old PS3, or I could use a PS4 um, to watch it on a PlayStation branded, not that that matters, a small 3D television that I have here in my office, actually right down this way from the way that I'm recording here, um, or I can watch them on a PlayStation VR hooked up to a PlayStation 4. Uh, so far as of this point, PlayStation 5 does not allow any kind of a 3D viewing as far as I know for Blu-ray 3D, even if you're using the adapter to be able to use the PlayStation VR. You are very also likely aware if you follow this series that I wrote a saga on home video back in 2017, or at least released it back in 2017, and I'm working on the second edition. Now, there'll be three different volumes about this size uh, each, uh, about 1,200 plus pictures uh, and full color this time, et cetera, et cetera, expanded coverage and all that kind of stuff. Well, as I was working on a chapter for the book uh, called Inter Disney, which is the same name it had back in 2017, I'm working my way through dealing with pictures. And I had gotten lucky back in the chapter, the Lucasfilms in HD, because I was trying to figure out a visual way to represent the fact that the films were released in HD in 2015 through digital means for the first time. And how would I represent that visually? Well, it turns out I had a bookmark from that release, and I was able to show both sides of this kind of special promotional bookmark thing, so at least there's a visual to go with it. But in the introduction of talking in that Inter Disney chapter about the first retail Star Wars Blu-ray 3D release in the U.S., which of course was The Force Awakens, one of the things I ran into was the fact that I was talking about how The Phantom Menace had gotten a theatrical 3D release and had some other showings that Attack of the Clones and uh, Revenge of the Sith had gotten showings at celebrations and so forth, so that 3D Star Wars films existed before. And of course, we know that the process of the remastering that eventually was leading to those 3D releases is what gave us the 4K versions that then later showed up on Disney Plus for 4, 5, and 6, and so on. So, I'm trying to figure out a good way to represent that visually. And my thought was, you know, I wonder if they made special 3D glasses for that. I had a pair of 3D glasses based on R2-D2. I had no idea what it was from. Apparently it was from The Last Jedi. I hadn't bothered to really look at them. I just had them sitting on a shelf. And thought, you know what? I'll just find me some 3D glasses that can represent it. Surely there can't be that many of them. So I found a couple. I was like, this is cool. There's one specific to those releases of, you know, like the Phantom Menace. I knew there was a special kind of Phantom Menace real D 3D glasses out there. Gosh, there's more of them. Maybe I'll pick up a few more. And as I describe in the book when it comes to home video collecting, I got into the same Wiley e. Coyote kind of moment, right? Which is that moment where you've gone off the cliff already. And you haven't looked down yet. So you don't realize how deep the fall is if you truly take the plunge into this form of collecting. But you kind of look around, then you realize it. And you have a choice. Scramble back and grab the edge of the cliff and save yourself a lot of time and money and collecting, hunting. Um, or you just take the plunge and maybe flash a sign that says yikes along the way. It was the latter that I did this time, uh, which meant collecting all, as far as I know, of the Star Wars uh, special versions of 3D glasses, real D 3D glasses available out there on the market. Uh, some of them are through regular, just sort of the standard uh, real D 3D distribution. Some of them are produced by a company called Look 3D based out of Australia that seem to be more common on foreign markets than in the U.S., but did sometimes make their appearance here. 
Um, so when we're talking about 3D glasses, that's what this episode's about. My collection of Star Wars 3D glasses. We're going to look at, I think it's 23 of them if I counted correctly, but we'll keep a tally as we go. Obviously, I wear glasses. Shocker, right? So 3D glasses are always kind of an issue when it comes to going to see a movie in theaters. It has to be able to fit over a standard pair of glasses. And you may notice here, mine stick out pretty far now, uh, I actually, uh, when it came to my Oculus Quest 2 VR headset, had to get some prescription lenses, uh, little lens inserts to click over the regular lenses inside the unit because my glasses are too wide to fit in the headset. Uh, they do still fit within PlayStation VR, so I can watch 3D stuff that way. Unfortunately, Oculus Quest 2 doesn't have a way of playing 3D Blu-rays yet, unless I guess maybe you use something with SideQuest. So a standard pair of 3D glasses at a theater are kind of small. These are a pair of standard Real-D 3D glasses. Notice it is marked there as Real-D 3D. Same thing on the other side. You've got that little symbol there noting that they are meant to be recycled, right? You get them in the little baggie, take them out of the baggie, use them, you're done. You toss them in the little recycle bin and you walk away from it. But sometimes there are custom ones, which are what we're going to see here, made to celebrate a film's release and those make them collectible. For what it's worth, this will be a bit of a From the Star Wars Home Video Library fashion show. The only time we're ever going to probably see such a thing. Um, I would suggest, as I'm showing you these, you might want to play to a background of, uh, what is it, Right Said Fred, I'm Too Sexy or something. Um, because A, it would be funny, and B, I'm not going to include it in the video because I don't want the copyright strike. Um, suffice to say, you know, I'm too sexy for the Porgs. Too sexy for a Porg like Locutus of Borg is probably how I would have sung that. This, though... It's just kind of the standard look. Okay, these are polarized lenses. They work with the standard Real-D 3D thing. They basically look like standard sunglasses for the most part. Okay, um, flimsy, cheaply made. They're just meant to very quickly just get you in, get you out. Uh, the lenses themselves are basically like a, a thin plastic, uh, easily dinged, easily damaged. But again, what's the big deal? They're meant to be recycled. If you're watching at home, you might wind up having different types of 3D viewing options, whether it's television, uh, whether it's a projector and so on. So there's different types. The kind that I use are kind of big. They actually fit over my glasses. Um, these are Sony's ones that go with the Sony television that I have. The, they called it the PlayStation 3D display that was marketed back when PlayStation 3 was the current console. Um, not that big, but works well, relatively affordable out there. Uh, these are an active shutter system. You have to actually turn them on. There's a little power light up at the top. I don't know if mine are charged. Yes, they are. Hey, um, you charge them up through uh, USB up here at the top, if I can get the little thing open. Uh, yeah, there you go. USB up there at the top. Um, and basically, it links to your system so that it, it handles the shuttering of either side of it here but a little more technologically savvy but also requires charging whereas you know the standard polarized lenses do not not collectible just something you might have sitting around the house if you do this but if you're going to collect star wars 3d glasses there's quite a few out there to check out and we're going to do this in essentially um film release order so we're going to start with the phantom menace which saw 3d release in theaters back in 2012 and then also screened at celebration six now, first, you could have gone to a movie theater that actually offered the special collectible keepsake version. This is the package. They always have information on the back about how, like, they're not friggin' sunglasses and so on. Um, we got Maul there, collectible keepsake, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, 3D, Real-D 3D, Lucasfilm, uh, and the copyright information and all that. These are basically Real-D 3D glasses done in red and black, and usually with these, what sets them apart, at least in some of these early ones, is the branding on uh, the, what do they call them, arms, I guess. These are red. You've got Real-D 3D in red on one side, the mall face, and the film logo there on the other. Lucasfilm copyright stuff on the inside and so on. Notification saying not for use of sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, pretty garish here, but they worked. Then later in the year, you could have seen it at Celebration 6 with a similar set of glasses here. Collectible Keepsake, Star Wars 3D, Real D 3D, Star Wars Celebration 6, Lucasfilm and Copyright, same kind of warnings on the back. These are sort of a neon green with black kind of design. 
Wieldy 3D. In this case, Star Wars Celebration 6 is the logo. Same kind of stuff on the insides, which we don't necessarily need to show every time. Eh? Eh? I look like I should be working with uh, Jim Carrey and Batman forever. Then Look 3D put out their own version that was sort of to commemorate this release. It was put out at retail, which is a little weird, I know, which were these. So Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace 3D. You got Anakin there. They're pod racer type goggles here. It says Anakin Skywalker's pod racer 3D glasses, certified real D, right? So they're not uh, through the company, but certified uh, to work with it. The back, Star Wars, Anakin Skywalker pod racer 3D glasses. Race into cinemas to see this year's release of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace in these studio approved real D certified replica Anakin Skywalker pod racer glasses. Included in pack are Real D certified 3D glasses and a soft cloth bag to clean and store your eyewear for use in all Real D 3D equipped theaters and with compatible passive 3D TVs, monitors, and laptops. Certified Real D 3D. Uh, Look 3D eyewear, uh, like the Australia address and web address for look3d.com. Look 3D logo. Um, you know, keep bag out of reach of children. Not for use as sunglasses. Or for IMAX, for instance, or any other active technology cinema. StarWars.com, copyright date, um, and legalese and whatnot. Sticker there from the original uh, selling location. And of course, I wanted to keep these on the card because they're just sweet looking on the card, right? All the other ones, you just have the baggies that you open. I wanted to keep it pristine, or at least as pristine as one of them could be. So what did I do? You know me. What did I do? I bought another pair. At that cool cloth bag, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace 3D, Real D certified, look 3D, not for use as sunglasses and so on. Nice feeling cloth bag here. And then these are the glasses, designed to look like Anakin's. Episode One: The Phantom Menace 3D and all. Pod racing! Right? And then you got the little symbols there on the end. Uh, the inside doesn't have anything except just the uh, uh, standard trademark and not for use of sunglasses stuff, just not anything other than just the embossed type thing or whatever you want to call it. These are a little heavier than the other ones in terms of how much of your face they cover. Now this is pod racing. No, actually, Anakin, it's not. It's flying a ship and trying not to die, but... Okay. You jump ahead a year and you jump to Germany for Star Wars Celebration Europe. I believe it was the second one in 2013. That's where they aired Attack of the Clones for fans in 3D. So we have Star Wars Celebration. Okay. Uh, Messe Essen, Germany. Europe over here. The dates. Really 3D. Lucasfilm and copyright. Warnings on the back, just not the same style, but basically saying the same thing, but in different languages about how they're not freaking sunglasses. So, no, they won't actually protect you from, uh, you know, the sun. For that, you need actual sunglasses. They will, however, protect you from having casual conversations with the people around you at the movie theater, because if you are wearing them, especially if you're wearing them outside of a movie theater, uh, I believe most people will see you and have the same... Uh, reaction as uh, Leia's advice back in Return of the Jedi, right? Uh, Run away! Far away! From the person wearing the 3D glasses. The style is very much like what we saw there uh, for the ones for Phantom Menace at Celebration 6. Mine have a little bit of a dent in one of the lenses up at the top. You got Real D 3D, and then Star Wars Celebration Europe with the location and dates underneath it, because that's all part of like the, just the standard logo, the Lucasfilm copyright stuff inside. And there we go. Yeah, it looks very much like what you saw there. And notice they're a little tilted, right? I've noticed that my head and most people's heads, they're not symmetrical. That's actually how you can tell sometimes when a, uh, a head is fake, when it's created with CG. But apparently my glasses are always slightly tilted uh, and these go on, of course, also slightly tilted. So add that to the imperfections along with the, uh, the, the calyx and stuff like that. Uh, and the fact that I'm so short that my two and a half year old now comes up to my belly button. Then jump ahead two years, we finally get to see Revenge of the Sith in 3D, but only at Celebration Anaheim. 
packaging there. Anaheim 2015, Star Wars Celebration, Collectible Keepsake, Lucasfilm and Copyright, Real D3D, the various different warnings, kind of like the other one in the different languages. This particular set, a little more subdued. They're black like the standard ones here, no other colors. You've got Real D3D on one side, you've got the Celebration Anaheim logo on the other side, and then Lucasfilm has shifted sides, but whatever. Not a big thing. So these look pretty much like just the standard Real D3D glasses. Not a whole lot of effort into these. Although, again, branded to be able to be collectible. That brings us to later in 2015 when The Force Awakens hit theaters. And this one had a pretty big wave of different uh, collectible 3D glasses in the U.S. Um, all Real D, you know, kind of standard ones that are out there. Uh, most of the ones that I've seen have always been branded with the same company, which is Cinemark. Uh, it's the, actually the movie theater chain that my wife and I go to, uh, Cinemark Tinseltown 17 in Fayetteville, Georgia is usually the one that we wind up going to and wanting people to shut the hell up. So we have Star Wars The Force Awakens, Cinemark, that's the company. Uh, Real D 3D with the copyright stuff and everything down at the bottom, along with uh, Keep Out of Reach of Children. Uh, it does say retain packaging for future reference. So just in case I ever need to read the warnings, keep the packaging. Okay. So there's four for this particular uh, product line. They're all branded with um, different things on the sides and they're all themed after something or some character from the film. So we're going to start out with the one that's themed after BB-8 here. We've got the film logo there. And sort of the ball-looking thing there in real D. Front of them. Now I look like I'm going to kick Marty McFly's ass, doesn't it? Kudos to you if you got that reference, by the way. Then we have kind of a, a thicker armed set here. This is for Captain Phasma. Notice there they've got this design where it's got the two little cutout areas here and then up here as well. It's a similar design to something we're going to see later. Kind of thick, like I said, film logo, real D over here. That's the black carry over to another sort of cut out little area there. Like I said, pretty big. Pretty large. Unlike Phasma's role in, you know, the sequel trilogy. Now, what's interesting about the next two is that they are basically the standard versions, at least from the U.S., uh, that are designed after a First Order Stormtrooper and after Kylo Ren. But those are also the two characters or, or styles that were used by Look 3D to produce another pair um, that was available, again, mostly outside the U.S., but I think some places in the U.S. Um, you usually see it more in Europe than over here as far as, you know, the sellers and stuff like that these days. Um, and it seems like Look 3D, because they were only making a couple, maybe took a more elaborate approach to them. So the standard Stormtrooper ones are very much like Phasma. There's your logo, there's Real D, but notice it's basically the Phasma ones, but in white. You know? There you go. Phasma, but in white. Not a big deal. Forgive me if I'm going to weird anybody out, but I'm really tired of taking my glasses on and off, so I'm just going to go without them and just assume that I can see what the hell I'm looking at here. Um, the Kylo Ren ones are nicer to me, I think. Um, they're kind of straightforward here, though. You've got just sort of that one rim of silver going down the side with a little swoosh, and then the nose and lower eye pieces have the little markings here to go along with the style of his mask, and you got a nice red symbol there for the film logo. Then you got Real D over here, um, and they're cut in a slightly different way. I really like the feel of these, but for Kylo Ren, they still feel kind of narrow because of how big his mask and, and bold his mask was. Not such a thing for Look 3D. Look 3D, and for this I have to have my glasses on to be able to read it, has these clear packages in case you're looking for these at any point. Okay, so Star Wars The Force Awakens has your warnings and stuff down here, has a Look 3D logo down in the corner. Okay. and their web address, and all the warnings and stuff on the back, but they are clear, okay? Look 3D, with only a couple of exceptions here, always clear ones, and always in pairs. But check out how detailed these are compared to those other ones. 
yeah, there's not as much, you know, kind of etching or like whatever you call it, cutouts or whatever in the bottom, but multiple layers of the lines going across the top as they curve over to the side. Then there's your logo. I do like the red a little bit better. It's a little bit glossier, not kind of funky cutout. So it's kind of like I'd prefer the arms from the regular one, but I much prefer the facial part here of Look 3D, although it does make it quite a bit larger on your face. Ugh. Pretty big. Pretty big. Now I look like I should be going and fighting like Mad Max or something. Just walk away. The Stormtrooper ones were also somewhat nicer. I mean, the arms just, you know, film real D3D and all that kind of stuff here. But notice, thicker at the top, right? Got a sort of a ridge going on here. You can just barely see there on the video. Um, not that I could tell, because who the hell knows what I can see. Um, and it's got the little thingies down here. I don't even know what they're called, but the little thingies that you see on the Stormtrooper helmets. Um, instead of it just being like a little cutout piece, because you sort of have the cutout piece going on right here. So nicer... Stormtrooper ones as well. Uh, for when you are going to kill innocent civilians, nothing beats Look 3D. Pretty sure they won't put that on their website. I do want to take a moment, by the way, and thank both uh, Jeff Rabjohns and David Dumbbell when it comes to those uh, Look 3D ones for The Force Awakens. Uh, turns out that basically I couldn't find them on any uh, US eBay listings. Found them on a couple of UK ones that shipped only within the UK. Wound up asking Jeff to help me out uh, so he would actually order them uh, and ship them over here. I'd, of course, reimburse him for that. Turns out one of the sellers was David Dumbbell, who is another member of the Star Wars Home Video Group. Um, one of them, not the one from David, arrived damaged. The reason I'm able to record this now is that one to replace that one finally arrived, uh, shipped from Australia recently. Really kind of a pain to get my hands on all of these, but I believe it is now a full set, at least for real D3D, or at least I hope so. So that brings us to Rogue One. Packaging here. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, real D. CDM 3D, and then copyright stuff. It appears to be sort of the standard packaging for the ones for Rogue One. Three this time instead of four. And they're all, they feel a little flimsier, quite frankly, than the ones for The Force Awakens. We start out with the one that is themed after the Rebels. So you got the cool little symbol there. Little ridge going on. Rebel symbol. Rebel symbol, this side. Symbols with real D3D, this side Rogue One, a Star Wars story with the symbols. Kind of cool looking. Similar uh, color scheme, though, to BB-8, so not really sure why the hell they used orange, but whatever. Not bad. A little more rounded. Not bad at all. Sure. Looks like I should be guest starring on The Flash or something, but sure. Then again, we have a pair that get sort of one-upped by Look 3D. Um, the standard versions of a Stormtrooper one and a Death Trooper one are the ones we're going to see first. So you have Rogue One, a Star Wars story, Real D. Notice, basically like what we got for the Stormtrooper for The Force Awakens. They use the Stormtrooper design a lot, I guess because it's a, a super easy, barely an inconvenience to use these uh, uh, to tip the hat to one of my favorite YouTube series right now. Then the other one, and I actually think I'm going to have to replace these. The arm keeps popping off. It doesn't want to totally open or close. i got to kind of take it off to open it, take it off to close it, which are Death Trooper ones. Rogue One, a Star Wars story. you got the little marking there, Real D, 3D, a little markings there. But just kind of flimsy, not really trooper-y looking. I mean, they got the little green bits kind of meh. I mean, looking at this, you know, it looks like you got something on your cheeks. It looks like you've got a blemish of some kind. Like, somehow you had some acne or something, and it got so bad that it turned green. Possibly from eating food at a movie theater. Meanwhile, Look 3D kicked it up a notch. Star Wars Rogue One, certification thing, Look 3D, legalese, but there's an actual stormtrooper on the packaging there. For the Stormtrooper ones, the Death Trooper ones as well, have the character on the packaging. So that in and of itself takes it up a notch a little bit. But these are the Look 3D Stormtrooper ones. White with now a black bar here. Nothing really fancy underneath 
anything. Um, they don't have the little pieces here like they did for The Force Awakens, but now you got them over on the sides. There, Real D 3D, name of the film, but not the film's logo, just Star Wars with Rogue One underneath it. Uh, and then inside, you can see that black piece is still there. So, nicer. I will say, though, these are tighter. Um, I'm not sure that I could wear these easily. In fact, let me try it with my glasses. Woo! No, those suckers are going to break if I try to wear these with my glasses. The, uh, the standard Real D ones can fit over my glasses, just not, you know, in a fun way, right? But they do fit over your glasses if you wear glasses, even if you have sort of those wide frames like I do. And then keeping with the black and green theme, but not on the front so it doesn't look weird. There's your green for the text, but there's your death troopers there. Little circular indentations, got the double ridge kind of thing there. Um, you know, so you put these on and you start talking like, yeah, you, you sound basically like either you're a death trooper or you're talking on a Verizon cell phone. So before we get to the last batch, I said that I would count these as we went and I really haven't. So that was uh, three for the Phantom Menace. Regular, Look 3D, and Celebration. Then one for Attack of the Clones, one for Revenge of the Sith, that makes five. For The Force Awakens, we saw six. Four standard, two Look 3D, that brings our total to 11. Add another five for Rogue One to make it 16 because we had the three regular ones plus the two from Look 3D. So we stand at 16 with The Last Jedi and a special pair still to go. And notice, by the way, I said Last Jedi and the special pair are all that's left. Turns out that there's a trend, and I will say up front, this is not the place for Last Jedi bashing, Last Jedi bitching, or deciding to go on rants about Last Jedi. Whether you like the film or not, this is not the place for it. The comment section for this video should be about actually what I'm showing here, not to spend your time uh, dealing with your fandom rage about uh, Last Jedi. Though you are welcome to post that. It just is a good signal to me to go ahead and hit hide user from channel for you, so only you will ever see your bitching. Okay, um, so uh, there's a, a phenomenon that I've noticed. When it came to some of the coolest um, international Star Wars home video releases in recent times, some of those included uh, stuff out of Blue Fans from China, the premium boxed sets uh, for single films coming out of Japan, uh, and the uh, big sleeve editions that are LP size as far as the packaging goes coming out of the UK. All three of those ended after The Last Jedi for whatever reason. Um, there weren't any for Solo. There weren't any for Rise of Skywalker. Those product lines, for various reasons, aren't around anymore. Big Sleep Editions just stopped in general. Uh, premium Box Editions, I don't know if they're still going on in Japan or not. They at least aren't for Star Wars. And Blue Fans is having a licensing rights issue with Star Wars, which is why they haven't produced any more. But in that same line of thinking, that for some reason it's between Last Jedi... And Solo, when there is a cutoff of product lines, we also see that those special 3D glasses apparently ended after Last Jedi. At least thus far, I have not seen any for Rise of Skywalker or for Solo. And for Last Jedi, it was basically the same approach that was taken back for The Force Awakens. Four individual standard ones and two from Look 3D. Packaging-wise, Star Wars The Last Jedi, Legalese, Real D 3D. I would also note that uh, one of these, an R2-D2 set, was actually available as a, uh, I forget it was called, loot box, geek crate, whatever it is. Uh, one of those types of services offered it as a giveaway item, but it was also available as a theatrical giveaway, as the rest of them were. So the ones I had before, and they're freaking gigantic, uh, which now I have like multiple copies of from buying lots to get the ones that I needed here, um, are the R2-D2 ones I just mentioned. Star Wars The Last Jedi, cool little blue bits there, real D, blue bits, big circular areas, kind of like the Anakin Pod Racer ones, even with the thing in the center to replicate R2-D2's look, although he doesn't have eyes underneath that, but whatever, right? Freaking gigantic. And this, by the way, this, by the way, uh, that is actually one of the Infinity Stones. Uh, it's the Nerd Stone. 
Then there's a pair that is ostensibly based on Poe Dameron. Rebel slash Resistant Starbird there. Star Wars The Last Jedi. Stripes. Similar side with Real D and all that. Front. Basically just the standard kind of double layer type thing here. So red across the top and then the facial part with a little cut out with red right at the bridge of the nose and on the sides right by the arms. A little slicker looking. Might be something you might see somebody wearing as sunglasses out there if they like big ass sunglasses. Not bad. Uh, not very Star Warsy until you turn your head, but not bad. Then you have the Praetorian Guard represented here. Okay, so we got Last Jedi. We got that interesting sort of red going into the almost blade looking arm here. Same thing on the other side with Real D. And First Order symbol in the center there. And is ridged all the way through. So, Praetorian Guard here, right? So, you know, if you're going to fight against, you know, an enemy of your boss and uh, you need the ability to make one of your blades disappear out of nowhere, then this is a good pair to wear, I suppose. Kind of feels like something out of G.I. Joe. Then the last pair, surprise, 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 Stormtroopers. But not regular Stormtroopers. They went with the Executioner Stormtroopers that we see in Last Jedi, so they did get a different design. So we have Star Wars The Last Jedi on sort of a black arm here, connecting to the white area as the black continues around to the front here, returns over here and includes part of the top going into the other black arm with the real D stuff here. Um, and it does have the little corner cutouts and top cutouts that we've seen on some of these before. So Executioner here. Not sure if it screams Executioner Stormtrooper so much as Cruella de Vil. But it's okay, so if you're gonna, you know, kill some resistance traitorous spy people, or go out and round up some Dalmatians, you should be good. For Look 3D, again, there were two. Similar design. Packaging here with Last Jedi, but also another language underneath it. It's Le Dernier Jedi. I'm assuming it's French. Probably. Um, I did get one of these from Canada, I think think. So it could be that it was released in Canada, hence the double language there. Uh, certification and all that stuff in double language, UPC. Uh, then you got the Executioner Trooper there. All your information that you need there on the back. The other pair that we will see momentarily is Phasma. This is what appears to be a standard English version, not Canadians, hence only having the title once. I don't care about the baggies, really. Thank God. Otherwise, I'd be hunting even more. Um, real these certification, all that stuff with Phasma. So Phasma finally gets another one. Um, that's nice, I guess. Um, these are basically their Stormtrooper ones redone as the Executioner Trooper, uh, which also, again, makes it a little bit cooler looking than the standard ones for the Executioner Trooper. So there's your logo, real D3D. Not black arms, white arms, but then you've got the black parts here as well with the cutout areas and everything, but you got the little vents or whatever the heck they are underneath it that I just think make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more Star Wars-y, although still, it, it basically looks like you're you're a pirate who's too stupid to realize you're supposed to wear the eye patch underneath whatever you've got on your face for glasses or something, right? Because it just darkens that entire side. Just Just an odd look when it's not on a helmet to me. As for Phasma, she finally gets her due, I guess with these, um, in getting a better pair than she got with the Force Awakens standard. Basically, it's the same design except for the top here and the ridges as those Executioner ones. So, a nicer version. Oh, my God, a much tighter version Ugh! of the Phasma ones. What are these made for? Children? And that brings us to the last pair in this relatively, you know, lengthy episode looking at something that's very tangential to home video because they're more collectibles, obviously, from the theaters. Um, this one, actually, I, I'm kind of curious about the provenance of. The seller gave a very, very, very basic description of where this comes from. But it's a pair of 3D glasses that have their own box and everything. They're a little more fancy schmancy. And that's because they come from Lucasfilm itself. 
Um, my understanding is that these were used as sort of gifts um, taken by people who were present at Lucasfilm 3D screenings of certain movies, presumably Star Wars films among others. Um, they're by Look 3D. They are Lucasfilm branded, but not specifically Star Wars branded. But boy, are they a much nicer pair. Nice enough that I actually got two of these to keep one in the box, and the other ones, along with those other 22, are going to be hung on a little display thing, like a, a sunglasses display thing, on my wall next to one of my home video shelves. I'm going to take down the little Lego magnet things I had up there that you may have seen in the little tour video. Um, this is the box. Nothing on any of the sides except the front that has Lucasfilm on it. It is one of those sliding slipcover type boxes. The box itself underneath is no big deal. They come in a very nice glasses case emblazoned with the Lucasfilm Limited logo. I'm trying to get a good angle on this with the sunlight here. All right, the Lucasfilm or the there we go, the light from the very, very hot bulb above me. Okay, uh, very nice. Opens them up. What you get is a little package with the glasses. We'll look at that in a second. You also get a lens cloth, also emblazoned with the Lucasfilm logo. The glasses themselves come with a card telling you it gets used with Real D 3D. They have a tag on them. It says Lucasfilm Limited, Look 3D, and notes the 3D certification. There's information about the certification on the inside. Um, downside of this is I haven't been able to find so far any form of like copyright date, um, but I don't want to damage it or anything like that looking for one. Um, the glasses themselves do not have any kind of date on them, um, but the glasses are these nicer frames, better quality lenses, by the way. The lenses themselves are not that crap plastic. Still has the st sticker on here saying it's Real D uh, certified. Real D certified. Okay, so standard lens, better lens. Got a better nose piece here. Black on the outside, gray on the inside. Inside has Look 3D China, or excuse me, Real D 3D over here. Look 3D China on this side, so maybe they're based out of both China and out of Australia, because some of the other ones are noted as Australian. Um, and then the arms, each side, Lucasfilm Limited. So fancier, schmancier, for those who happen to attend a Lucasfilm event screening. Um, yeah, but nice. I mean, I really do like these. If I was watching at home, you know these would be the ones I'd be breaking out a lot just because they're Lucasfilm, they're more comfortable, they fit better on your nose, better, uh, more resistant to damage lenses. Um, I would just have to take this thing off, which I will for the pair that eventually will sit on my little collector rack. So yeah, 23 different pair of 3D glasses, uh, 22 of which are definitely Star Wars, one of which probably is used for Star Wars screenings, but is a Lucasfilm uh, oddball that was just really too cool to pass up when I was collecting the other 22. Uh, did I expect there to be 22 specific Star Wars ones when I started? Hell no. But once I started down the rabbit hole, it was a little bit uh, too steep of a slope for me to stop. I just kind of kept sliding my way on down until finally getting my hands on all of them, uh, including, again, with thanks uh, to Jeff and David. So, um, thought you might just like to see those before I put them up on my wall as a display piece here. Um, neat little side corner of collecting. It doesn't seem like this is a thing that's really uh, a big thing for collectors, honestly, at this point. Um, so probably a little bit easier to find than even some of the rarer Star Wars home video stuff. I will say it seems as though right now the ones from Celebration Europe are a little tougher to come by than some of the other ones, as are a smattering of some of the others. Like uh, Last Jedi, you can find a couple of them pretty commonly, the other two not so much, unless you buy them as a set. Um, but at least at the moment, it's not super hard or super expensive to get your hands on individual ones if you're looking for them. If you're trying to get them all, the cost is going to add up, but that's because you're getting a lot of individual purchases here. 
Um, but definitely something I thought was kind of cool. I figure, hey, it'll now let me show these in the book whenever we talk about a 3D theatrical release, and it'll give me something neat to put up on my wall. So why not? Um, I hope you dug this uh, intermission, sort of tangential episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the home video viewers and the theatrical 3D viewers. Because you know that Disney Lucasfilm really doesn't want us to watch in 3D at home in the U.S., or they'd give us Blu-ray 3D still. Yeah, that's all.